What if I were to tell you that you can change your reality? You would be a little dubious at best, or consider me a crackpot at the very worst. After all, we all understand what is real without needing to be told about it, and we know that in this world at least, we cannot somehow magically control it, right? Well, yes and no. Yes, we cannot somehow magically control the world. But no, we do not all understand what is real without being explicitly told about it. Confused? This is where things get interesting. Let's consider that what we think of as real is comprised of a collection of sensory inputs reported by our senses. We know when it is cold, hot or in between. We understand what is hard, soft or sharp. Pain is something we learn to avoid along with its causes and we all gravitate towards pleasure. Yet even here things are not quite as they seem. Pain as well as pleasure are not really sensory inputs at all. What our senses report each time is a specific sensation that has to do with a particular situation. We get very cold in a frozen lake in winter, for instance, and we know that this is something to be avoided. Yet, there are people who swim in frozen lakes in winter, and for them the sensation, despite it being cold, is one to be avidly pursued because it gives them a particular sense of pleasure. The lake is cold in either case. We have instruments that tell us that each time, and they do not lie because they measure a thing, temperature. But the rest is an interpretation laid on by our brains. Some of us have brains that will interpret the frozen lake temperature reading as cold and try to avoid it. Others, however, have brains that will interpret it as something that needs to be pursued and enjoyed, and they will seek it out. It is the same with reality. What we consider to be irrefutably real is usually a collection of hard facts that are directly or indirectly verifiable by our senses. How we choose to interpret those facts, however, determines how we see reality, which then directly affects what we do about it, which then results in different outcomes for different people, even if we all start with the exact same set of circumstances each time. Consider the classic glass half full or half empty experiment. Given a glass that's filled with water exactly to the middle, we can all agree about how much water the glass contains. But once we take this relatively simple fact on board, what we do with it changes everything. So, for argument's sake, suppose we are walking in the desert. We come across the glass filled to the middle. Here are two things that can happen. First, we could say that the glass is half empty. This interpretation would only draw conscious attention to our predicament. Our brain, seeing how we are alone in the desert with only half a glass of water, would panic, feel fear, despair even. We may decide that all is indeed lost, that there is no way we can survive this and that this is it. The brain would release cortisol, the stress hormone. As that accumulated in our bloodstream, our higher brain functions would shut down. We would be unable to be analytical. Our heart rate would go up and many of the major arteries in our body would constrict the amount of blood going through them. Our blood pressure would rise. We would be prepared for fight or flight. But without an enemy, that would only lock down our critical decision-making process. We would lose hope, feel despair, and everything around us would be bleak and dangerous. Our end would be imminent. But suppose we saw the glasses being half full. Suddenly, with a half full, entirely unexpected glass in hand, we would feel emboldened, empowered, somehow given hope in the most unlikely moment. We would look around with fresh eyes and see, for instance, that there were plants in this desert, and those plants, however sparse, must have access to water to survive. We would look for ways to get to it, 
our brain would work over time and we would become innovative in order to solve the problem. The glass did not get bigger from one instance to the next. The water contained inside it did not change. What changed was our perception of it. Along with that perception, we changed our reality. When reality changes, we see things differently. We feel we have different capabilities. Our brains work differently. We then process the information they receive from our senses in different ways and begin to see just how to achieve the outcome we want. If we survive the desert in this example, it's not because of the half glass of water we found, but because of the way we saw that glass. Our perception governs our reality. Our reality is then affected by our actions. Our actions are guided by our beliefs. Our beliefs arise from our perception of reality. Everything is eventually linked.